Trip, trip. What is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World, and my goal today is for you to create your very first clap inside of Serum that you can be proud of. Maybe you could sell it, or it could be a unique clap that you use for your own productions. Whatever the reason may be, this tutorial will help you create that clap. Now, when it comes to creating claps, as long as you understand the basic foundation of it and the shaping of the clap, from there, it's literally all experimenting. There's a reason why I drink a lot of beer when I work on samples, and that's because a lot of it is just hashlish work where you try and, and use stuff like, oh, I'll try this, I'll try that. Or you can be like Dead Mouse and get Chris Lake in the studio and have a clap-ass orgy in front, of an, in front of an SM57 microphone. Whoever it may be that you decide to have a clap-ass orgy with, uh, as long as you understand the basics, you will always create a nice sound clap or something that resembles a clap that you can use in your music as always guys if you want to support my youtube channel you can head over to evilsounds.com where you can find a lot of my sound design work i promise none of the claps i made or presets i've made had any ass clap orgies going on there but maybe i should pick up on it to make better sounding claps i don't know but let's get straight into this tutorial all right guys welcome inside of ableton if you're still here what are you, what are you, what are you doing with your life man <laughs> nah. but like the reason we're going to be doing a couple of things guys is if you notice here we have a 909 clap and you can see there's essentially kind of like three hits one two three and then we got this sort of release to it now we can achieve a similar result utilizing white noise but again it's up to you to kind of go with what you want to add if you want to have reverb at the end and vice versa do a bit of vector uh, you can layer different claps you can create a clap and then layer with another clap or like you can uh, record acoustic instruments or use acoustic instruments and get the releases and there with your clap to get like really cool results that's what i tend to do a lot of the times as well and that's called vector synthesis where you're kind of just using two sounds and doing like kind of like a crossfade between them to create a new sound with that so Knowing that, we here we have our serum, and it's going to be hitting on the two and four uh, here with the kick and the open hat. Now, I've made a tutorial on the kick, by the way, if you want to check it out as well. Now, the first thing we're going to do is essentially use bright white noise inside of serum, and now we're just going to shape it. So, if you remember what we saw, we can kind of get something similar here in, in, um, in serum by just having three of them, and then having the third one, and then having, again, this guy here kind of be our release. From here, we can kind of just move this up and down depending on how much of a release on the clap we have from there we're going to get rid of the bpm and anchor so that we can control the rate and then we're going to put it in envelope mode so it only plays once and it doesn't loop now the reason this is very kind of hashless work is because a lot of times once you start messing with these values here, like you could kind of go like so, uh, it starts to get again finicky. You get different results. Uh, as you can see, so you create some dynamic there. From there, I'm going to utilize a high pass filter to get rid of lows that we don't need. We'll go with a high 24 here and route the noise. Now you can kind of see where we put the cutoff really alters it, so make sure that you understand what kind of clap you're trying to make. And here you just play with the ray to kind of get the speed you want. You can definitely go slow. Notice that when we get slower, we can hear those little envelopes a little more, so this will require us to move the envelopes a little bit more to the right. Now this is where it gets a little bit finicky because now you're starting to get a little bit more into this kind of territory. Okay, from there, make sure you're here with the kick and the open hat because it can get easy for you to just get into this tunnel vision where you're like, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like a clip, um, as you can see. Okay, uh, from here, we're just gonna put a little bit of distortion. Uh, I'll always like to use OTT because I could always shape the clap afterward. And I'm going to put just a little bit of a hostile on it to give it a bit of width. So just. Okay. From there, let's put an EQ on that. And get rid of lows we don't need, obviously. And 
And then we're just going to boost in areas that we think sound good. That That is where it can get a little hard if you're not in a good listening environment, but... So now when we have... Again, we're kind of shaping the clap. Now, I also like to use like a transient designer now... The reason I feel like Dead Mouse would layer like an ass clap with his OG claps is just to create sort of like a transient on it to make it punch out a little bit more. So it's kind of like adding like a top kick from the cashmere pack into it. But we're going to uh, do a little bit of a. And I'll just add a bit of sustain here. Let's see if we can elongate this a bit. Okay, and let's see the elongation here. Let's focus it in on the mids. Again, again, like I'm saying, this is very hashlish work, but the important thing is that you understand how this works, this LFO, and why we do it the certain way. Again, it's just messing with it till you get something that you like. Let's put a bit of resonance. I'm going to activate the clip. Let's add a bit of reverb. Maybe we can use uh, just a very small room reverb to make it sound a little bit more alive. Uh, lower that down a bit. Let's put it after the transient shaper. So all, it's all about signal flow. Okay, very cool there. Now, from there, let's say assume you like the clap. The thing is, is that if we start to switch, you can see that we start to get kind of like different results with the clap. So it's just due to the tonalities of the noise that you are using. This one has a very nasty. So from there, you might boost more highs to give it more or increase the pitch. As you can see there. Now, there are other things you can do as well. I mean, you could definitely apply sort of like this decay on the pitch of whatever noise we're using. So it kind of goes from 0 to 100 real quick. Real quick. Ninja. Real quick. And now... And then we can keep going from there. Now... The key thing that I want you to understand with the clap here is this is the basics of it, creating your clap. There's much more you can do with it. Like, I'll give you an example here. Let's say we have the clap. So here what I have is essentially what Cashman created, like the kick enhancer, the snare enhancer. You know, it's, it's a folder there. But you can do a lot with that. For instance, let's say we get something like short noise. We can definitely layer it in there. And that gives it like a new vibe. Uh, we can layer and down pitch the shit out of it uh just again these are things you would do just very experimental but again you understand that it works because you're kind of doing a little bit of vector just and now we have because of this guy we're getting that vibe you kind of see the the tone changes comp uh on the sound so you could definitely start to um, essentially utilize Foley recordings that people have created for you to use or you could grab a Tascam so for this specific reason I have one where I go and record little weird stuff in there with snares and claps like one of the things I like to do with snares is I like to get real life snare recordings and um, usually there's this sort of like release to the snare that is very hard to create with a synth so I love to grab those and layer those to get more of those military snares that you used to hear in big room or in progressive house the, the fun thing about this is again it is you have to be a little creative and think outside the box with some of these uh, but you can do a lot of cool stuff again don't don't be uh, scared to try it. like this this one just doesn't work it sounds a little too like it doesn't fit so you have to work and shape it. So that's more like vector synthesis stuff. We can look. 
and now we have that and and then from there again you can start to layer other drums now i don't recommend like if you're gonna sell these don't don't use other people's drums from sample packs depending on if they allow you to do it and manipulate it so that you can create your own here what i'm doing right now is just grabbing essentially these claps and trying to create more of a grainy clap so they don't have to land directly on beat. Maybe a little bit. The key thing is if it sounds good, again, you can hear that go like, huh, it sounds a little questionable, but we want to test it out. That's the big, that's the big idea, right? So when we go and put it in the. From there, we can pan to the right, one to the. So we get a little bit more of a stereo field uh, again making claps it can be fun for some people but for me doing a lot of this stuff after a while it gets a little old you're like okay and hey, here we go let's try this let's try that so i need a lot of beer to think outside the box that's just me though you call me an alcoholic if you want i know i am but you know what live my life how i want i'll die one day i'll rather die making clap samples with a bunch of like coronas or something but hopefully that makes sense for you guys the basics again comes down to Creating the very standard clap, and then from there you can layer it, you can start to manipulate it, you can start to go like, you know what, I like that, but let, let's see, what if we start to add, I don't know, like a, uh, let's see, a ring moth. Well, that gives it a whole different vibe. Now, if I And then from there you would have to have you to switch your, um, from there you would have to switch your key. And it's finding those sweet spots again. We can move it. Let's see, what else can we do with this? Uh, let's see, maybe a scream. And now we get more of a like kind of an erosion effect to it. Uh, you could try different distortion. I don't know if we. That makes it sound a little bit more lo-fi and grainy. So I would definitely layer something on top of it that's a little bit more high frequency. So that way we get more of those highs out of the clap. Even though I still like again the grainy part of it. So I could go like you know what let's. And that gives you more like that. But again, it's all about using what you have at your disposal. There's no right or wrong about creating claps. Uh, I mean, you could slap your hands on the mic if you think that's going to give you the clap. But if you're making dance claps and not, you know, claps for movies and shit, uh, then this is the basics of it. Again, you can uh, manipulate this in any way you fucking want. If you want, you could have this, this. I don't know. Add another one in there for, for, for God's sake. You can do, okay, let's do another one, Sen. Okay, I already messed it up. But anyways, I hope that makes sense for you guys. I hope you had fun watching me do this without any beer. And uh, if you guys want to make your own clap, now you know how to do it. Now, the last thing I need to teach you guys is how to do open hats. But I'll wait a year to give you guys that so I don't get any competition when it comes to these packs. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But <laughs> well, you guys take care. You guys have an amazing day. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out. And most importantly of all, have fun making music.